Probably for several reasons. One, it's my own personal development. Um, I always want to be better, you know? Peyton Manning was known as a great quarterback, and he'd tell you he spent hours studying game film, not just of his own, but of the greats that came before him. So for me, the study helps me become better. And with humility, I say, and I'm grateful, that my church doesn't regret giving me the time and space to do the PhD program, because even leadership comes back and says, your preaching is better. You know, the depth that you bring to the preaching moment is better. Some of it's unconscious just because I'm reading more. I do better in a discipline course of study. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you, my brain is firing on different things. I'm being exposed to different thoughts. I'm being exposed to different writing. It's, it's making me a better preacher. I, I, feel, I feel stronger when I stand in the pulpit because I've got grounding. And it wasn't just I opened up the Bible and came up with three good points and a shout. <laughs> you know, and now I'm gonna challenge mind in different ways. So the breath of reading is making me a better preacher. And ultimately, I am fully aware that all of us have a shelf life. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to live beyond mine in the pulpit. Um, we, we know stories of great preachers, kind of like Ali, who got in the ring one time too much, you know, mm -hmm. that the church would have done better to pass it off. Alpha Street is an amazing church that deserves an amazing succession plan that requires me to recognize my time as pastor is going to end. Um, I don't want to do this until I'm 70 or 80. 60, 65, I want to know that I can walk away. Because um, the stress and strain, we, you once asked a question about LeBron James, how many dunks does he have in his legs? Mm -hmm. He's great right now, mm -hmm. but how many does he have? How many great sermons do we have in us? Mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to have to preach beyond 65. I want to preach when I, when I want to, not because I have to. <laughs> you know? And the stress of, uh, I don't want no more meetings, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the question is, what comes next? And the clear train for me is, if I'm serious about legacy, is the academy. Mm -hmm. you know, to be able to teach and to write. People can listen to our sermons, but you've pressed upon us is writing, right? There's where the discipline comes in. That's where the legacy is left, and that's where we're validated. Um, and as I was exploring the program, and you and I were just talking in general at one of the um, consortiums you pulled together, you said something that I'll never forget. Until you have the PhD, you're always adjunct. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with adjunct. No, wrong. Nothing wrong. But I want to do more than that. Howard John Wesley wants to sit as a full-fledged partner at the table and have my thought, my work, and my scholarship be respected. Mm -hmm. And the PhD is necessary to be able to leave with academic scholarships something for generations that come afterwards. So I would pray that I'm able to make a contribution to the field that 20 years from now someone's talking about. Yeah. You know, the same way, you know, I'm reading about other preachers that they'll not read about me, but read what my thought and theology and theory of preaching was. And so the PhD journey, it, it's making me a better preacher. It's helping me prepare for the future. And to be honest with you, it gives me a respite from church. Mm -hmm. You know, um, every Monday when I'm in the library, I'm not, I'm not thinking about meetings. I'm not worried about budget. I'm in there grinding out papers and reading and knowing that I'm getting smarter, like that my brain is getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'll be able to walk into CTS, I'll be able to walk into Duke, I'll be walking to Emory, I can walk into Yale and have a conversation. Um, so I love it. it. It's got me thinking at a different level. Mm -hmm. yeah.